back to the gorilla position. I'm here in Perth, Western Australia. Really great holiday. They've sent me over with a camera. Thanks a lot, and thanks for sending me over without a makeup artist. It's first thing in the morning. Last night I went to see a fantastic wrestling show. Be seeing another one tonight on both shows. We've got the sensational Kelly Skater. Kelly, welcome along to the gorilla position. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Look, you've got great experience. You've been all over the world. You do something like six months in America, six months in Australia virtually now. But you're a back of smash girl. Yes, I am. And actually, I head over every six months to the States, but I only sent, spend about a month there. Right. But yeah, the rest of the time I'm from back of smash Australia when I'm not traveling all around Australia. Absolutely sensational. How did you get into the American wrestling scene? Uh, well, basically, Sarah Doray actually came over to Queensland in 2008. And she went back over and put in a good word for Tennille and myself. And her, Madison and Jessie said to me, you need to send your stuff in to Shimmer. So I sent him an email and he sent me one back saying he'd heard good things, but I still needed to send in demos. So I had to send in a demo DVD with six or seven matches showing how I could work face or heel, how I could cut promos, I had to send in photos. And when, once I sent them over, he sent back saying he was interested and was I willing to come over. So after that, I headed over and haven't looked back since. Absolutely sensational. Do you find it hard to travel and work at the same time? I mean, how much time do you get in a town before you're thrown into the ring? It really depends. Sometimes we get maybe a day, if I'm lucky, a day or two. But sometimes you might get in at night and then the next day you have to wrestle. and. It can be a bit hard sometimes, you're a bit jet lagged, you're a bit tired, but once the adrenaline hits, you're okay. Yeah, and you're here in Perth at the moment. You did a show last night, which was Friday night, Saturday night this evening, you'll be doing another show. Is it hard to sort of go bang, bang from one show to the next? Um, it's not too bad since I've been working in the States because they might actually have us doing two shows in one day and then another two shows the next day, so that's far worse. So now I've gotten more used to it, so it's really not that hard. And when you've started coming back from the United States, obviously you're over there at least once a year now. Yep. Uh, you notice a difference in the uh, the structure and the, the culture shock and the way that things happen between Australian wrestling and American wrestling? Yeah, there's definitely a difference. I find the American wrestling is a lot more organised. Mm. Like you always have your agents and things like that, which is there'll be a few of the veterans who are there to actually help you plan out your matches. They're more thorough in, all right, we've got this, this and this in certain matches, so therefore you can't do this, this and this. With some of the really good Australian feds, you get that to a smaller extent, just not as you know, thorough. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more experienced people in America who can help you out. There's always a lot of really knowledgeable people who can give you that feedback and help you learn quicker. And how is the audience interaction? You've got you know, your, your Australian audience. I'm very familiar with the Australian wrestling audience, especially where they're... They're right over the fence, they're, they're right into it, they're absolutely insane. You've got your 12-year-old kids at the front who want to be a superhero, you've got your 16-year-old girls at the back who want to watch the superheroes. Yeah. What's the American experience? Is it very similar or have we got a different kind of an audience mindset? Um, I think it's pretty similar in a lot of the feds I work. Like, when I worked the CWFs and the Indie Girls and things like that, which is, it's more of a normal wrestling show, it's very similar. You've still got that aspect of, you've got the kids who are really into it, and it's the only time I've found it different is at Shimmer, which is very much so an adult audience. It's not an adult pervy audience, but it's really hardcore women's wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. So they like the wrestling just as much as they like the characters. So it's not like Glow, which is the glamorous no. ladies of wrestling, which is kind of bling Las Vegas. Not at all. Um, Wrestlelicious is more like Glow, whereas Shimmer is a serious company. You've still got your goofy characters, like you've got myself and the Canadian ninjas, mm -hmm. who you know can be goofy but serious at the same time. You've got Lever Bates, who dresses up like a superhero, but it's still, it's not over the top. There's wrestling involved, and it's actually quite hard hitting wrestling a lot of the time. Can you describe what your character is? What is Car Kelly Skater? I got the name right for the first yes, time all good interview. Work. Kelly <laughs> Skater. I got to, you've got to tell people it's early in the morning. We've both been at a wrestling show last night. No. Jet lag still from coming uh, across from Melbourne. And I've been here for four days. What is? Can you describe your wrestling character? Um, yeah, well, basically, the rape tank is my gimmick. Hmm. It pretty much means I think I'm the biggest person ever. I come out, I flex. I tell the fans how scrawny and out of shape they are. I try to take on the biggest people, the strongest people I can find. I think I'm completely indestructible. So I always get myself into a little bit of trouble because I'll go pick on your awesome Kongs, 
and your cheerleader Melissa's because I think I'm bigger than them. And then, well, we find out I'm not really so much <laughs> bigger than them. <laughs> And when you're working with another company, how hard is it for you to kind of establish your position within that company? Um, I haven't had too much problems with that so far because I guess it's just such an easy gimmick to work. Um, and it's more hard if I'm coming in as a face because I can't really do that gimmick as effectively as a face. Um, I could go for the over-the-top silly, but some people not, might not get that and might not cheer the girl acting like a retard, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so it really depends. Sorry for the political incorrectness there. But oh, come on, it's wrestling. Yeah, it's for wrestling. Goodness sake. If I'm only saying this, I'm being very well behaved. You've also got to work with some great overseas stars. What's it like getting access to them? Do you get a separate dressing room or is it all kind of the same in the one room? No. Overseas guys. Um, no, we have pretty good access to them. Like they're all very friendly. They're not. None of them have come in with that. I'm a superstar attitude. Like mm -hmm. Nikki Rocks and Mercedes Martinez, who are here last night, are two of the most humble people you'll meet. Mm -hmm. They will pull you aside after a match and give you some really good feedback. They'll help you with training. You know, they're just they're just girls. Yeah. They're just there to help. They're they're wrestlers. They're some of the boys. You know. Yeah, they they're just girls. How do you find yourself getting into a, a different company style? You're here in Perth today, obviously, you're from Melbourne, you're working in... How do you pick up the company style of the company that you're working with and work within that style? Um, to be honest, it's not so bad for the girls because there's only a few of us all together anyway. So the girls I'm working here, I'm working in Melbourne, I'm working in Sydney, I'm working in Queensland because I tend to work with the exact same girls wherever I go. Yeah. I wrestle your Jessie McKay's, your Bombshell Bows, Madison Eagle, Shazza McKenzie, Sway nearly every match in Australia. So it's there's no real style we have to fit in because we're pretty much told just do what you do. Yeah. Is there ever a temptation to just do the same match over and over? Okay, we did this we pulled this one in Sydney last night, let's just quickly do it up in Brizzy again because nobody saw it. Um, no not really because to me it just kinda of feels like a cop out. Mm. Like you're phoning it in and it doesn't feel like it would be very fair to, you know, the fans because they're there to see you put in effort. You don't just want to half-ass it and go, uh, I'll phone it in. Mm -hmm. It's just lazy. <laughs> well, I've got to say that you are one of the least lazy wrestlers that we've seen around the countryside. Been Thank watching you. your work for a couple of years now. Thank you. And absolutely delighted you've given us this time today. Thank you. Thank you very much.